program is focused on Lake Coast teachers and staff. It kind of began with the death of several teachers lately. Unfortunately, they are not buried at South Whitley Cemetery, so they did not make the cut. Uh, there are other educators in the cemetery, but it was dependent upon what we could find in the library archives. So we just picked what we could find, and we did do this as a live walk through the cemetery. So we do have a few memories shared during that walk, and I will try to remember to share those with you guys. But I wanted to share first this quote a mediocre teacher tells, a good teacher explains, a superior teacher demonstrates, and a great teacher inspires. Hopefully these teachers that are in this walk were ones that inspired. The first teacher slash librarian that we covered was Carolyn Everly. She worked at the South Lily Elementary School for many years. She was the daughter of DeVerl and Ruby Montel. She married Dean Everly in 1951 and lived in the South Lily area from that point forward. She worked as a librarian at South Lily Elementary for 30 years until she retired. She was a member <clears throat> of Spring Creek Church, the Data Theta Tau sorority, and the South Lily United Way. She enjoyed playing bridge and euchre with her many friends. Uh, Cheryl Yeager sh shared with, with us that she attended all the conventions for the sorority. And she had friends that she knew everywhere. And everybody had a kind word from her. She never had anything bad to say about anybody. next person we talked about was Grace Jenkins. She was the daughter of Trevor and Leela Hall, and she grew up in the South Whitley, Whitley County area and graduated from Columbus City High School in 1961. A few years later, in 1964, she married Robert, Robert Jenkins, and they moved to Colorado. They spent their married life on the farm that's still located behind the Church of God there in Coloma. She worked as the school secretary at the South Whitley Elementary School for 10 years, and she took pride in being known for wearing her typewriters out with the speed that she typed. She did mostly secretarial jobs during her many years of working. And she was a member of the Kalama Christian Church, the Whitley County 4-H, and the Whitley County Extension. She also played the organ and participated in the Joyful Jubilees singing group that entertained at nursing homes. Did anybody have any memories about Grace to share? We didn't have anything on the walk. person we talked about was Jerry Gidley. She was the daughter of Alonzo and Alberta Barney. She grew up in West Virginia and attended Magnolia High School in Madeline. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. She graduated in 1966 and three years later she married John Gidley and they moved to Indiana. On September 27, 1969, they expanded their family with twin daughters, Tammy and Tina. She worked as a teacher's aide for Whitco and could usually be found at the study hall monitor. Everyone knew that you didn't cause problems with Mrs. Gidley because she would sit you near the front to keep an eye on you. If she liked you, you could get away with a lot more. And she'd even share her book stash with you if, she wanted, if you wanted something to read. She retired in 2005, and 
she and her husband were members of the South, South Whitley Church of God, and she enjoyed doing genealogy research. I personally first met Jerry when I was in high school. Um, unfortunately, when she saw my name, she did not recognize it, so she set me on second row. When she realized who I was, she said, don't worry about it, you're only gonna be here for a short time, so we're not gonna move you. Because I always volunteered at the elementary school during my study halls. But while I was in her classes, she would pull out her books and I'd have something to read. Phyllis Simmons shared that the first time she met Jerry was in September of 1969 when she was in the hospital to deliver her first child, her son, and she heard across the hall, it's a girl, and she had her son, it's another girl, and they didn't realize they knew each other until the twins and uh, Jamie were working together at the local pizza place and they were comparing notes about their birth and they realized they had the same birthday and everything, so their mothers started comparing notes and realized what had happened. The next person is James Calvin Draper, or JC as he's better known by. He was the son of Warren and Chloe Draper, and he grew up in Miami County. From there, he graduated from a Somerset High School before marrying Ruth Tate in 1940. They moved their family to South Whitley in 1964, where J.C. worked as a farmer, but he also worked as in the Agricultural Stabilization Conservation Service of Wabash for three years. And additionally, he worked for the Cooperative, Cooperative Produce for five years and Bowman Stockyard for seven years. Later in life, he took on the job of driving the bus for the Whitco school system, and he made sure the children got home safe and sound for 12 years. JC also worked for the maintenance department at the South Willie Elementary School for five years, where he made a lot of friends with the kids. Yeah, I remember him when we had tornado one time. We, at that time, we had to go to the basement of the elementary school and uh, he had a big jar of candy there and to keep the kids calm, he would pass them out candy left and right, trying to keep, keep kids calm because we were all freaking out that there was a possible tornado. So he was a super sweet guy. Everybody loved him. Another memory that was shared was from Wanda Morford who works here at the library. And she talked about how when her oldest son was in kindergarten, she was kind of concerned about him getting back on the bus to get home because at that point we only had half day kindergartens. And so she was talking to JC and sharing her concern about, well, making sure he gets on the right bus. And JC calmly turned to her and says, aren't you going to pick him up? And then she realized, oh yeah, he, he is done at lunchtime. <laughs> so, but he was always calm and unflappable and listened to anything anybody wanted to tell him. Michael. Edna was the daughter of Samuel and Orpha Parrish Smith and grew up in South Whitley. She graduated from South Whitley High School before she married Samuel Michael in 1926. They moved away but returned to the area in 1945. A few years after Samuel's death in 1960, Edna moved back into the town proper of South Whitley and made her home. She worked in the daycare and preschool at the South Whitley United Methodist Church. And she worked closely with Pauline Mink during that time. Pauline will come up next. But she also took on more duties of education in the town by becoming the story lady at the South Whitley Library. When she was seen walking through the streets in her long blue dress and bonnet, the children knew that it was story time, so they'd head to the library. 
and I also loved paint and was a member of the South Whitley United Methodist Church and the Literary Club. Nate Myers shared that he remembered her taking them on a during story time. They tell she tell them to sit on the carpet and to close their eyes and use their imagination, and the carpet would become magic, and she they would it would take them on a trip to somewhere else. And Nate thought that was one of the greatest experiences as a kid because he got to go to new worlds. For me, she was my preschool teacher, but mostly she worked with the boys, and on rainy days, she'd take us all into the next room, and we'd learn the hokey pokey. So, any other stories or comments? Okay, Pauline, Pauline Meek was the daughter of Alvin, Alvin and Lena Bloom Fleck. She graduated from South Whitley High School before attending Manchester College to get her teaching degree, and then went on to Indiana University for her master's degree. In 1930, she married Ralph Meek, and they moved back to <coughs> South Whitley in 1939. She spent 30 years teaching in Columbia City, Fort Wayne, South Whitley, and Columbia Township Schools before organizing the kindergarten program at Columbia City Township School. After that, she was asked to form the nursery school at South Whitley <coughs> United Methodist Church and ran that program for 15 years. Over the years, she was a member of the Delta Theta Thau sorority, the United Methodist Church, the Epsilon Sigma, Omicron Library Society, the Whitley County Historical Society, the Indiana Te Retired Teachers Association, the National Retired Teachers Association, and she also enjoyed traveling to places all over the United States, Costa Rica, Cuba, the Caribbean, South America, Mexico, <coughs> and Canada. Pauline came from a long line of educators. Her two granddaughters were on the original walk with us. Becky shared with us about how when Pauline was young, if she and her siblings would stay in bed a little bit later than her parents would like, they would be yelled up the stairway, unless you're sick, you better get downstairs, take them all the books that you could have been reading. This is just wasted time. So the kids would hurry up and come downstairs at that point. Her granddaughter, Chris, gives Pauline credit for uh, fostering her love of books and reading. And both of the girls remember her telling the story about how when she would go to the courthouse with her dad, she would uh, ride the banisters down the staircase so every time they go to the courthouse, they look at the banisters and think, Grandma could have been killed. <laughs> For me, I remember her from preschool when she and Edna were the two who usually worked together and they took care of the boys and things when we were separated for activities. But when it was the whole group, Mrs. Meek was the one who did, did the actual teaching. Biddy was the daughter of Lewis and Helen Beard. She grew up in South Whitley and graduated from South Whitley High School in 1952. Four years later, she married Lee Bidding and had three children. Many know her as the secretary of South Whitley High School and later as a teacher's aide at South Whitley Elementary. Eva was also the member of South Whitley United Methodist Church, where she was also the church secretary, a den mother for the Cub Scouts, and a Girl Scout leader. She enjoyed participating in the Women's International Bowling Congress and working on her family history. She never missed a family history 
program here at the library as long as her health held out. Okay, Prudence Thompson was a little before my time, but Prudence was the daughter of Lawrence and Jesse White. She married Ralph Thompson in 1921 and was only about 17 when she graduated from South Whitley High School. She went on to get her teaching degree from Manchester College and her career spanned 25 years in the Whitley County Schools. The last several years of her teaching career was spent at South Whitley Elementary where she taught fourth grade students before she retired. She was a member of the South Whitley Literary Club. Clara Murray Butt. I have trouble calling her Clara Murray, it's still Mrs. Butt. She was the daughter of William and Marie Matson Calhoun and grew up in South Whitley. She graduated from South Whitley High School in 1947 and went on to earn her bachelor's degree and education from Manchester High College in 1951. She took a break from her education to marry Doyne Bud on December 21, 1952, but continued to Ball State for her master's degree where she earned it in 1963. She began her teaching career working at Forest Mann Elementary in Huntington she taught there for two years, but the rest of her career was spent working at South Whitley Elementary, where she was for 37 years. Besides teaching, she was a member of the United Methodist Church, the Theta Tau chapter of the Delta Theta Tau, and the Indian Retired Teachers Association. She also served on the board of the South Whitley Library and volunteered at the Mary Lee Environmental Center and the Whitley County Literacy Council. Her joys in life were traveling, bird watching, and her two sons, Mike and Steve. I never had her in school, but she taught my brother and sister. And I remember her most from her work at the library because she would read a lot and usually had her books placed on hold for other people that she knew liked the same type of material. She was also on the <clears throat> library board and was one of the few people who could tell Marion what to do and Marion actually did it. Yeah, I remember the fact, I had her as a teacher and she also had my dad. And when she found out who my dad was, she said, hopefully you're not like your dad. She said, hopefully you're a better student than what your dad was. <laughs> Next is Virginia Vance. She also was before my time, but Virginia was the daughter of Charles and Lottie McConnell and grew up in the area around South Whitley. She graduated from Sydney High School in 1930 before earning her teaching degree from Manchester College. She married Luther Vance in 1937. Virginia taught for 37 years and was the art teacher at Whitco at the time of her retirement. She was a member of the Pearson Presbyterian Church, the Indiana State Teachers Association, and the National Education Association. Jane Stuff was the daughter of C. Vance and Blanche Green. They weren't originally from the area, but moved to South Whitley when she was about three years old. She attended school in South Whitley and graduated from the high school in 1933. She went on to Manchester College and earned her teaching degree in three years, much faster than I did. She began her career teaching at the Laurelville Elementary School where she worked for three years before she married Robert Stump in 1939. After their marriage, they moved to Illinois, where they stayed until 1944, and then returned to South Whitley. She took a job at South Whitley Elementary teaching kindergarten and stayed in that position for five years. Due to Robert's job, they moved once again, 
but this time to Michigan. Once again, they returned to South Whitley in 1957. At that time, Jane began teaching first grade at South Whitley Elementary. She remained in that position until she retired in 1983. Jane and Robert made their home next door to the funeral home here in South Whitley and were members of the Church of God. She seems to have been one of those teachers that you loved or you hated. Personally, I always thought she was a little dessert. And at the time, she was only in her 60s. <laughs> when Janet Moore, who was the other, one of the other people who worked at the library and worked with Mrs. Stuff, would talk about her, I would always ask her, is she dead yet? And I'd always be reassured, no, she's still alive. Elizabeth Earnhardt was the daughter of Jay Stanley and Mabel Hines. They didn't move to South Willey until Elizabeth was eight years old. At that time, she be began attending school in South Whitley and graduated from high school in 1934. She began her work life as a telephone operator in South Whitley, and she held that job for nine years. She went to work as a cafeteria manager at the South Whitley schools, and she managed to put up with those kids for 20 years before retiring. She's probably best known as being the co-owner and operator of the South Whitley Florist. She was there for 12 years until the business was sold. She had many outside interests and was a member of the South Whitley Methodist Church and the Eastern Star. She also served as register at the Old Settlers Parade for over 20 years. Chris Palmer talked about how when she was young in school, she would work at the flower shop with Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was always short, happy old lady. And after school, she'd always, well, not always, but occasionally come in with a napkin full of brownies. And she'd be sure to tell them, don't eat too many, we make them with prunes. <laughs> Erwin, or as most people knew him, Pete Mitchell, was the son of Oda and Zola Mitchell and grew up in the Larwell area where he completed Larwell Elementary before his family moved to Huntington County. While living there, he graduated from Bippus High School in 1955 and attended Olivet Nazarene College. In 1957, he married Clara Anderson. Their first home was in Columbia City but in 1963, they moved to Richland Township, where his roots were. Over the years, he helped out in several jobs, including with Holmes and Company in Columbia City. That was a lumber mill, for those who don't know. And in 1977, he became the head of maintenance at Whitco. He proudly held that position until he retired in 2001. He wasn't done serving, however, and joined the Whitco School Board. Cheryl Jackson, or Mrs. Jackson, I cannot call her Cheryl, was the daughter of Robert and Helen Geiger Blanchard and was part of the last graduating class of Larwell High School in 1969. She attended college in North Manchester where she received her teaching degree, but went on to Indiana University to receive a master's degree. In 1973, she was hired to teach fifth grade as Miss Blanchard. But then she married Michael Jackson on March 17, 1974, and became a teacher that we all know as Mrs. Jackson. The next fall, she went back to the South Willey Elementary and began teaching first and second grade. It wasn't until the early 1980s that we sh she began having children, all boys, Chris, Jeremy, and Nathan. She was a member of the South Willey United Methodist Church and the Indiana Reading Association. 
I personally had her for second grade. And I remember at Thanksgiving, she had a poem that she had written on the wall that we all had to memorize. And my mother came in for parent-teacher conference and pointed out that something was spelled wrong. The next day, there was a new copy hanging up with the word spelled correctly. Also, about halfway through the school year, mom got a phone call from Mrs. Jackson. She was concerned because I still hadn't talked to her unless asked. And mom asked if I was having any difficulties and was told no. So mom told her not to worry. I talked to her when I was ready to do so. And I remember in Mrs. Jackson's class at the end of the day and at lunchtime, calm us down she would read from us from the little house books and that's how I got hooked on that series and from that time on every time I was good when we go grocery shopping if they happen to have a copy of one of the books in the series I get to buy one so I ended, eventually ended up with the whole set but it just took a while Mark Skiles was the son of Harvey and Margaret Skiles, but was not originally from this area. He graduated from Patterson Co-op High School in Dayton, Ohio, but came to Indiana to get his master's degree from Grace College in 1972. Mark began working at Whitco as a social worker, and he continues his education to receive his master's degree in general psychology from St. Francis College in 1974. He continued as a guidance counselor for Whitco until 1983. He met and married Lisa C. Christ in 1982, and while working towards a second master's degree in education administration and supervision from Indiana University. He received that degree in 1983. Most of their marriage was spent in South Lily, and they had two children together, Scott and Tracy, or Scott and Stacy. After receiving his second master's degree, he took a job as an assistant principal at Tibby Valley High School. From 1983 to 1986, that's where he worked. After that, he came back to the Whitco school system to be the principal at the South Lily Middle School, which later turned into the Whitco Middle School. And he worked there from 1986 to 1995. During that time, he also coached track and cross country at both the high school and at Grace College. He was a member of the Whitco School Board and served as president from 1997 to 1998. He was also part of the Indiana Principals Association, the National Association of Middle School Principals, Indiana Principals of Leadership Academy, the Indiana School Board Association, and the South Whitley United Methodist Church. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Skiles had MS and died very young. The last person on our list was Max Myers. Max was the son of Evan and Ellie Myers and grew up in the South Italy area. He graduated from Marlow High School in 1951 before joining the Army where he served from 1953 to 1955. After leaving the military, he married Karen Meadows in 1956, but he didn't spend any time lazing about. He continued his education and attended Manchester College and received his bachelor's degree in education in 1960. After getting his degree, Max became the assistant principal and coach at Larwell. He stayed in that position from 1960 to 1962. At that time, he became the principal and biology teacher at South Whitley High School, where he stayed until 1973. At that time, he was named Outstanding Teacher of America. For the next several years, he moved around to several schools working as a principal, teacher, and or coach. He finished his career working as a principal at Arcola from 1978 until 1980. Maxwell was a member of the Oak Grove United Methodist Church, 
the National Educators Association, the Indiana State Teachers Association, and the Northwest Allen County Teachers Association. His family continued in the field of education as his wife worked at the preschool at the South Whitley United Methodist Church, and his son, Nathan, worked in technical support at the Whitco Middle School, Whitco High School, until his retirement. That would be the end of our cemetery walk. Please join us for our next one next year.